Hello, my name is OPZ. Today is all about spinning. We are going to twist like hurricanes. We will rotate until we get dizzy. And I am not talking about dancing. I am talking about creating music. You may have noticed that I have four dials in different colors. They are used to control a lot of different parameters. Let me show you how to access the different features and what they do to your sound. Let's start with the drum section. We should mute the other tracks so that we can focus on our sound. You can do that by holding the mixer button on top of me and select the tracks you want to mute. Cool. Now select one of the drum tracks. Aces. For each of the instrument tracks there are four parameter pages. Depending on which page is selected each dial has a different function. To toggle the parameter page just press the shift button. As you can see the color of the LEDs change. This color and the blinking number on the value keys indicate which parameter page is active. Now let's spin some dials. Choose parameter page number 1. Swell. The first dial on parameter page 1 is pitch. It lets you control how high or low your sound is. Why don't you try to make your kick a little fatter by pitching it down? Oh yeah, you got it. Let's find out what the next dial does. When you turn the second dial you also turn the whole sample around. That means it will be played back in reverse. Press play to find out what it sounds like. Um, okay. Not exactly my sound. I think this is a feature you better use very carefully. If you don't want all notes of the active track affected by a parameter you can simply press and hold one note and turn the desired dial. Now only this one note is affected by the change. Alright, let's hear it again. Neat. So much better. The next parameter is a filter. If you turn it clockwise it will cut off the low frequencies. Turning it the other way around will cut off the high frequencies. Maybe your hi-hat would sound a little sharper if you would cut off the low end. Yes, sharp as a samurai sword. Let's move on to the next dial which controls the resonance of your filter. The resonance boosts the edge of your filter. Just as the reverse function you should use this parameter quite carefully. If you want to try changing a parameter without overriding the current value you can press and hold shift while turning a dial. As soon as you let go of the shift button the parameter is set back to the former value. Alright, let's just leave resonance to the default value and have a look at the synth group. If one of these tracks is active the first two dials on the first parameter page have a different function. They are used as synth parameters. As you probably remember there are different synth engines you can select for each synth track. Each engine has different parameters you can control. For your chord track, for example, you are using the shade engine. The available synth parameters for this engine are detune and drive. For an overview of all the synth engines and their parameters see the reference chart on the website of my makers. Let's select the bass track and move on to the next parameter page, the envelope. The envelope describes how the loudness of your sound changes over time. It is usually divided into four sections. What an incredible coincidence that I have exactly four dials. The first dial is used to control the attack. The more you turn this dial clockwise the longer will the sound fade in. The next dial is the decay. This dial lets you control how quickly the loudness decreases after the attack before it drops to the sustain level.
As you may have guessed the next dial controls the volume of the sustain. The sustain is the section in which your sound stabilizes. And the last dial is for release. The release lets you control how quickly the sound drops from the sustain to zero. Let's hear your bass sound now. Fantastic! Now let's switch to the chord track and toggle to the next parameter page, the LFO. An LFO is a frequency that is used to manipulate parameters. If the LFO shape, for example, is a triangle and the LFO target is the volume of a sound it will continuously increase and decrease in loudness. The first dial sets the amount of the LFO. The higher you set this value the more is your sound affected by the LFO. The second dial lets you control the speed of the LFO. You can set how fast the parameters are being changed. With the third dial you can choose a parameter to be affected by the LFO. There are six selectable targets, synth parameters 1 and 2, the filter, resonance, pan and volume. The last dial is for the shape of the LFO. If you turn it all the way down your LFO is a triangle. Spinning the dial clockwise turns it into a square. Are you happy with your sound? I am. Note that the LFO is not available on the arpeggiator track. Instead the third parameter page of this track is used to set the arpeggiator parameters speed, pattern, style and range. An arpeggiator plays back the notes you hold on the keyboard one at a time. If you play a regular C major chord it will play the notes C, E and G one after another and then repeat. The speed parameter changes the value of the notes. The higher the speed the faster is your arpeggiator. Yes, who would have thought? The next dial changes the order in which the notes are played back. By default it is the order you press the notes in. But you can also select that the notes are played repeatedly from the lowest note to the highest, from high to low, from low to high and back, the other way around, or randomly. The third dial sets the style of the arpeggio. You can choose one of six rhythmic patterns. And the last dial sets the range. If you turn this up notes of higher octaves will be added to your arpeggio. Alright, let's leave the arp track now and find out what's behind the last parameter. The first two dials let you set the amount of the FX sends. By default, these are delay and reverb. Why don't you try to give your sound some space by turning up the effects? The next dial is for panning your sound. That means you can place it somewhere in the stereo field from all the way left to right. And the last dial is for setting the volume of the track which hopefully does not need further explanation. 
That's everything you have to know about my parameter pages. You will find an overview of all these features in the manual or on the web presence of my makers. I know this is a lot to remember. But as soon as you know your way around these pages your workflow will be fluid and your sound will be phenomenal. Just play around with me. Twist my dials. And next time I will tell you how I like to be punched.